Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. It's Shelly with Spirit of Matter, and I have a little um, monthly theme episode, uh, which is another type of content that I didn't do before. And this is uh, basically April, the month of karmic relationships. And why am I saying that? Uh, first of all, we are still in the times where the nodes of the moon that are um, triggered by eclipses and triggering eclipses are uh, ruled by Mars and Venus, which rule relationships. Okay, Venus is bringing thing to get, things together. Mars is severing ties, but is also the penetration in having sex with the penis. And so penis and vagina. <laughs> okay, so yes, we see both the themes around like... Um, transgender community and discussions and arguments around um, uh, genitalia mutilation versus gender affirming uh, procedures, informed consent, and many, many interesting things like that. Also with the presence of Aries in Aries and Uranus in Taurus, um, that can lead to that. But another aspect is karmic relationships. And what is karmic relationships? And now I want to uh, tell you, I'm not a big expert on karmic relationships. If you want to know more about karmic relationships, I will turn you to people like Ernst Wilhelm or Lada Duncheva who made uh, courses about um, karmic relationships and how to see them uh, better. But I can give you um, a, a sneak peek at what can it mean for you and why do these things happen now? Why around the clusters? Why is it a good time to look or even study karmic relationships and why is it good time to pay attention to karmic relations in the synastries that you have with the people that come into your life right now and again karmic relationships do not have to be romantic relationships um, it simply means that there is a very fated encounter um, that may have um, you know previous life baggage uh, or previous life um, yes not necessarily baggage but more uh, past you may have past with with the soul of another person and or future um, that is in some way uh, fated so you would see fated encounters in addition to that mercury mercury retrograde brings kind of like x's and o's um, but very fated ones. So it's very likely to be this, those exes that you had fated relationships with. Okay, not a person that um, was like a more casual relationship, uh, but someone that was meaningful in your life. How to know this and why is it related to eclipses? One of the main significator of karmic relationships is Rao and Ketu, North Node, South Node, basically the nodes of the moon now every planets have nodes okay a person who's delving deeper into that is victor from astro victor um he's studying the nodes of everything right now in the kind of like between the nodes of saturn and uh, pluto which is why these times are such trying times but the nodes of the moon um, are triggered around eclipses every year and so when you have in your natal chart uh, and or transiting of the nodes to the rulers of your relationship houses to your ascendant or to your seventh house or even to your fifth house or the ruler the planet that rules them or the planets that's in there um, it's not impossible that you will encounter a karmic relationship what is different between those relationships and other relationships? Uh, in one word, fate. <laughs> okay, this may be a um, situation where uh, you were destined to have this encounter with this person. Karma means that there are certain uh, exchange, fated exchanges, whether of energy or intellectual or life experiences or information um, if you see for example in uh, marriage couples that have let's say uh, Rao and Ketu in um, 
in the same axis, but let's say somebody's well conjuncting somebody's Ketu, they would have like 9 to 10 to 12 years differences between them. And uh, is very much one person is becoming, uh, uh, is, is fulfilling the karma of the, pers the other person's past life. So they're like teachers to each other. Okay? If your ascendant, let's say, touches somebody's Rahu, they are becoming you. Okay? If your um, uh, descendant touches somebody's Rahu, you may have been with them in past life, but it's more like um, who you are is who they were. Okay? They were this person. You are now this person. But this also means your descendant is conjuncting their Rahu. So you are maybe even... Um, disdained to be in a partnership when you play the role that they played in their lives um, so you, you you want to look at them what kind of a partner they were you are disdained to either have a partner with um, a similar traits to whom uh, they were becoming towards the end of their lives okay um, I'm not gonna throw this. I'm not gonna throw this in there. It's so unrelated. But um, you know, uh, if for example a person was becoming something or someone in their previous life, um, then uh, and and you have the Rahu, the Ketu with your ascendant, you were you could either were this person if this person is no longer alive. It's not impossible that this is like your past life, um, or you uh, were you are something that they used to be and then you look at this person towards like the second part the after 40 part of their life this is where they're more connected with the rahu then you are uh, with, with the descendant will be having a partner that is more like who they were becoming okay um, or your partner is um becoming the that person but more in the second part of their life okay if it's inverted rahu this person is on their way of becoming you so they like you very much they are hungry to know more about you they're hungry to literally be you um so this is one way in which uh this can work ascendance usually tells us, but this can also happen with the ruler okay um karmic notes to let's say the luminary sun and moon uh very much like this but on an either emotional level which is the moon somebody's rahu is co-present with let's say your moon um the more they grow the more um perhaps even emotional affinity you two uh, may have uh, or the desire to have some quality that your moon embodies, or the desire to have nourishment like you embody. Um, and so, um, yes, this, this can be one of the uh, significations. Somebody has Rahu with your sun, very much like the ascendant. They desire to shine like you, but it's not just that they desire, they are disdained to shine like you. Because somebody has Rahu with your moon, I think is. Um, perhaps for children not so good because it is the second part of life, but maybe more for partners. Uh, they are desired, desiring to be nourished by um, by your moon or someone with similar qualities, and this is fated. So that it's not that they just desire this; they are fated to be nourished um, by you, or they uh, need or disdain to experience the type of care that you provide. Uh, if it is the sun, then it's a different type of uh, care. Uh, they are uh, very much inspired by you, but it's not just inspired. They are becoming inspirational figure like you are. So you've got to really watch your sun because you are growing another sun, okay? And so the inspiration that you provide, they are destined to shine uh, much in a similar fashion. If it is Keto with your moon, it can be someone that you felt safe with because you had past life relations. Now you want to make sure how do things, uh, how are things aspected, because uh, sometimes you could have good, good karma with the moon person. You have Ketu, 
and uh, your one of you is disdained to give to provide care for each other but it's not rahu so it's going to be for until uh, kind of like the karmic debt is paid okay it's kind of like they are saying for example let's say you're a refugee and somebody saves you okay so they are disdained to provide care for you and if it is good aspect then they genuinely save you not exploit you then they are disdained to give you uh, such um, care uh, but until you are free okay it's not for the rest of your life you're not necessarily know each other for the rest of your life it's kind of like this is the karmic debt maybe you saved them in past life and this is the karmic debt um so this is where with eclipses the role of fate does play a part it doesn't mean that you necessarily do not have volition as to how you experience those things um it simply means that there was a story and now we are continuing this story um when we talk about uh, ketu let's say with sun then uh, maybe you were even a parent just like with moon of this person um but while they can for, first of all drain your shine they can drain your shine um they can draw in on the energy on your sun but this is also where they feel confident so they feel confident in your shade but they're destined to shine you need to look at the sun they're destined to draw away from you okay so they draw let's say uh, inspiration from you but also energy from you and they, they kind of put even a little bit in your shine like you have to be honest about this um it's not like rahu rahu is just like eager is thirsty for the knowledge and the inspiration that you provide and they are going to shine as well Okay, so you can have even good relations if Rao, if Rao is well aspected. Uh, with Keto, unless Keto is like very well aspected, they drain on your on the energy of the planet. And so, um, and also they drain you and then they might like, they, they kind of like take your inspiration, your shine, your intelligence, uh, your confidence, your approval, and then they do something completely else with it. Okay, but it is fated. They are fated to stray from you in that sense. Now, in around this time of in-between eclipses uh, and around the time of the eclipses, fated relationships are going to come into being. Uh, fated relationships uh, that were in your life are going to make an appearance, some of them to be resolved. Uh, but the eclipse of April is a new moon, okay? So a solar eclipse, it is about... Um, uh, because of the Mercury retrograde, it can be about a new phase in relationships, karmic relationships um, that either are existing or were. This is where you are, might be uh, in for re-engaging um, with either an ex or a person that's from your past. And you are continuing a karma. You're not done with the karma that you uh, had in this life. This can take in, it can be taken in various forms. So, for example, you can think about a teacher that you are listening to uh, for a while. And then, okay, you stopped, you grew, you grew in separate life directions. Now comes this eclipse, you meet again for another chapter. Okay, and those are people that were very likely in your life, whether as living or dead, um, in the past. And now you're coming for another chapter. There is another chapter in this connection. It is fated. Uh, I want you to understand, first of all, Mercury retrograde with eclipse, uh, if something begins now, even if it's a second chapter, is very likely not to be like for your, for, until the end of life. But more for the duration of the time. We are in trying times. We are in times where there is wars and so on. Uh, so many people still like haven't finished helping each other, uh, and uh, and they meet again. Um, but also, um, it's important to understand it's li it's not likely that you are like going to meet the, uh, the someone you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Um, or that is a long-term relationship or something like that. So I want you to be, uh, may, again, there are always 
the, maybe you have natal or mercury retrograde and that's just picking up on that but uh, the overall vibe for april is karmic relationships are back is because um there is exchange that you need to be uh, doing with each other this is why right now you want to be looking at karmic relationships you want to be looking at those synastries you want to be looking at uh, how those karmas are aspected you want to be looking at um, uh, remediations for Rao and Ketu. Um, you want, and, and this is not only on a relational wisdom. For some of you, it is just like knowing things about relationships. Okay, just like getting acquainted with knowledge about relationships. Um, but for many of you, it is simply we are uh, in changing times in the world, and then some people come gather to help each other and some people gather in less benefic circumstances um, and this is how we're going to see it uh, playing a role okay so uh, you also will discover if you ch if you look at synastries somebody comes to your mind you think about someone um, you call to look at the chart you call to look at the synastry uh, you will look and you will see um nodal connections for sure with this person so i want you to take a look at how at the synastry i also want you to take a look at the composite because sometimes you don't see it in the synastry and you see it in the composite another form if you have ascendant for this person is what we call the vamsha chart uh, which is a vedic technique and then um, their natal to your navamsha their d9 navamsha to your um, uh, D9, you get your Navamsha nodes there can be very significant. Um, I think Lada has also courses around that, maybe older a bit, but she's looking at this again recently. So, um, you want to understand what type of uh, uh karma is there, like why, why is this happening? and uh, and what would be the best course of events the nodal connection can give you a why is this happening and what are you meant to do together okay for example most of you notice that i talk about oppenheimer and the e-bomb a lot but i also talk about denuclefication a lot okay and so i just recently checked my synastry with oppenheimer and i was like shocked <laughs> to discover uh, uh, how many significations of those uh, nodal connections were there. I was like, whoa, this is like almost my fate, my karma, my, um, to, to say these things, to expose you to both the reasoning of people who come up with A-bombs, why does this happen? Uh, and also the keys to unlocking the nucleification. Uh, and so of course, Oppenheimer would come again and I was called to look at this chart again um the synastry is impressive like in terms of the nodals is like uh, more more than Feynman more than anything that I have ever seen in my life and I've seen karmic relationships in my life uh I was shocked uh so um but you see this now we are in between eclipses and then the eclipse is going to be dealing with nuclear energy and I'm doing really everything I can day and night to unlock keys for the nucleification and to also explain to you why do A-bombs come into being both from the perspective of industrial revolution, from the perspective of like holistic stuff, um, from the, the ways that we treat each other, okay, even within tribes, uh, and to permeate all the, the facades and the masks, because at the end of the day when a bomb drops, okay, and so um really like there's there's no time to get caught up in um facade uh arguments there's no time to get caught up in flags and origins and this and that. like darling when the bomb drops nobody's gonna care about your desire to have honor killing or keep it hidden that this person married with that person in that tribe and it shouldn't be and when the bomb drops no darling no and why do these things happen? Because when people have such life where they suffer so much, when they're tortured, when they uh, don't have willing consent, then 
uh, even from childhood, then they manifest. They want to just end it. They want to just poof out. This is an A bomb. N mass poof out. When you have N mass of these people, an A bomb is being manifested. And right now, an A bomb is being manifested. And, and the denuclefying is to, um, to go beyond. We don't have time to argue about, uh, uh, how should I say it, um, nationalities. We don't have time to argue about, um, uh, are you colonialist or you're not colonialist? Like, when the bomb drops, it's not, gonna care, it's not going to care if you're colonialist or not colonialist. Nobody, like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. If, if in both societies there are children being exploited, there are people that don't have life, that, um, that they're being tortured, that they've been, um, you know, in, in those situations, and we don't even, like, tend to that. Nobody has, like, nobody has time for you. Nobody has time for your uh, indigenous tribe. Like, nobody has time. Like, were you really dedicating the time to those who marginalized in, within your society, to the masses, to the people and mass that uh, just want to poof out, that just want to die today? Did you just want this to end? En masse. Okay, and how many of them are within your society? Whether you are oppressor or oppressed, colonializer or colonialized. Um, we really, like, April 8th, it's around the corner. It is coming with a comment. It's, it's Chernobyl disaster. It's a bomb. It's silencing for 50 years. It's all of these things. But when people en masse just want to poof out, it will happen. Okay, so... Um, so this is uh, one maybe you would say extreme example of karmic relations, uh, but also uh, you want to understand if you if you understand why why this happened why am I, why is this person coming up again and again why is this thing happening again and again then astrology can do that and astrology can um, help with that um, not currently uh, available like for readings so it's something you're gonna need to learn like. Uh, on, on your own if you have questions then you can you can write to me questions and I do take requests um, and I can address that as you can see I'm addressing things <laughs> in between these eclipses that uh, have more um, mundane importance uh, uh, right now but it's, it doesn't mean that I will not I will read your questions and you can tell me if you have the chart and you can look up at astrosick.com uh, the notes of the moon they kind of look like this kind of like you and the inverted you um, and the one that goes like with the hands to the sky is the Ketu and the one that's kind of like closing in on something is Rahu. Uh, it took me time to learn this. <laughs> so um, this is a very very good time to invest in anything to do with karmic relationships um, because they're going to come to the forefront and it's also a good time to understand that uh, karma is meaning that you have a certain exchange that is fated with this person. Um, and it doesn't mean that this is uh, like your twin flame or your uh, soulmate or whatnot. It's like there is a certain fated encounter. One person was involved with another person in the past and uh, so on. Um, and then this growing uh, in this way. Um, let's say, and now this was actually the hour of Saturn when I began to record. So let's talk about Saturn with the nodes. Saturn with Rahu is going to incarnate your Rahu, um, but it might not be like a present, pleasant experience. Like, is your karma to tend to your Rahu, to tend to the North Node in your natal chart? Um, this is your karma. So uh, it's like you're destined to this, okay? When I was working about like housing and stuff like that, I met a person completely like not uh, related to my field in any way. And um, they had Saturn in my, on my Rahu. I noticed that they, the very house that they were manifesting was very much like the house that I'm manifesting. And I was like, oh my God, I have Rahu in the fourth house. Um, so something to do with housing and tending to housing. And then of course, the war broke um so this might not be like a pleasant experience but it's more like hey it's your karma it's now you got to do this and they uh, their saturn is going to make sure that you do this um saturn with Ketu, this person may have played a role of a teacher a parent a father in your life 
in the past and they have something maybe even in this life to teach you okay they come in and there are certain teachings that they can uh, provide however it's also the stand for you to complete this karma so for you to learn what they have to teach you uh, but you have to understand it's not rahu so with rahu you're learning to be more saturnian with Ketu, it's actually you're breaking free from this father figure yes you need to learn you need to learn what they have to teach you but it's also you need to learn to let go of them as a teacher okay i had this uh, a me too veteran i had this with the person that was in that so there's many things to teach and a lot of our arguments were like darling this is not the way i i'm growing with i'm here to grow with love your teachings your criticism look what you did in this life look what your friends did in this life okay uh so but it's also uh, important for the ketu person for the ketu person to um to let go of this type of teachings because your comfort zone is to be with this person to learn from this person um to become maybe even like this person but then your rao is supposed to break free from that and to let go of those type of teachings as well of this of this type of literally you are letting go you're purging this karma okay so it's a very karmic connection but you're also changing the course of karma even changing your beliefs on karma one of my arguments um in in this regard was like hey in this life i was survivor of very likely child trafficking uh, attempts to kidnap me to child trafficking and horrid stuff um by a doctor uh just by chance okay i was just who came to visit my grandmother i was just i needed to stroll around and then some doctor just kind of hugged me and pushed me to the side very luckily somebody interfered from the family and i will never forget this the line of this doctor was telling him why are you interfering interfering in what um and uh, uh fortunately i was uh, saved but uh we were so excited and overwhelmed about this that um first of all my parents did not uh, even uh, remember this um and i don't know if it's very unlikely that she wasn't told but it's uh, something that uh, was repressed and and um the, we did not like persecute we did not like immediately take his name his number because everybody was like frozen around this and so it's very likely that he kept kidnapping girls um happened in a hospital by a doctor uh, so not like a mental hospital even just by a doctor um and so uh you ask me if like do i want him in this next life to be a child that is kidnapped no no I want to end this cycle yes this is the point this is the point i'm the child in this life um and and i don't think it's useful for him to be a child that is kidnapped abolish child trafficking abolish expendable children um so those are uh, also related saturn is a big karma planet okay and so you disdain to um uh, tend to certain things but also you disdain to abolish this type of karma teachings because they're no longer relevant you're basically changing the way karma is done with pluto in saturn sign i spoke about this a lot this is the times like the time that people would read about in the bible where uh, they go from uh, uh, the father they the fathers did mistake and the teeth of the child are rotting to uh, the father's sins are not affecting the children we are transforming karma okay we are purging karma we are changing the course of karma if you think about the manhattan project and the industrial revolution it affected seven generations ahead and uh, uh now we have a potential to denuclefy the earth and we need to find a solution for this fluoride and for our teeth literally our teeth to no longer be affected by the sins of our fathers and for children to be freed from the um from this but we have to abolish expandable children practice we have to abolish the kidnapping of children if we do this then we release ourselves from those type of karmas 
that were like in the Bible, that the, the father would eat the rotten fruit and the child, the, the children, even seven generations ahead, their teeth would be rotten. No more. Why? Because the rotten fruit had to do with abolishing, with the child abuse. And when we are, and of course, as long as it's not tended to, it will continue to affect things. When Saturn, when Pluto is in Saturn sign, we get the chance to um, change this. Also, when uh, when Ketu and Rao are to do with Saturn, whether in relationships or in transit. Now, the transit is Venus and Mars, so we talk about relationships. Uh, but we also had uh, Ketu, Rahu in Capricorn and in Aquarius. I want you to think about those times as well. Because those times we were purging karma, we were purging the view of uh, Saturn. Uh, we were changing our worldview around karma. Uh, and this is really, really, really important. Um, okay, when I was going to therapy at Dedun, with they don't know its energy, Ketu was in Capricorn. Okay, so we can, and, and Pluto in Capricorn was um, opposing my moon. So this was a very, uh, Saturn, I'm sorry, was opposing my moon. So um, this was uh, very, very karmic. Yes, I don't have synastry, but very, very karmic. And of course, um, we were purging the old view of psychology and a lot of the medical practices that are endowed with this. Um, you know, as a person who was educated in science, and we were taught that the medical experiments that, let's say, Dr. Mangale was doing in people, they were horrid, but they yielded science. And the more that I learned about gynecology, the more that I learned about uh, both holistic medicine and conventional medicine, I realized more and more that the good news is that those type of uh, tortures do not yield science. They do not yield healing. If you are healing, it is in spite of the medicine. And many people that try to rehabilitate, whether mentally or even physically felt it like they, if they are healthy, it is in spite of the medicine and not thanks to the medicine. It's not because there is no medicine, but the good news is that you don't need to torture people to do medicine. And not only that, when you do that, you don't heal the medicine. So very much it takes away at the scientific argument in favor of torturing people supposedly in the name of science. This is big. Most of us grew up on, yes, this was very cool to do these things, but oh, science progressed so much. No, it did not. And if it did, it was thanks to people who were working ethically, people who had shamanistic view even. Um, and, uh, and and their, their insights were leading them to be able to even diagnose pa patients today. You have 1,500 um, possible diagnoses for every symptom you come to the ER with. The only person who would really get to see you is somebody who, for whom it is fated almost to be able to channel, oh, it's probably that thing in trial and error, and it's always uh, about listening to you. Okay, it's always, uh, you are the patient. No, but before enlightenment, listen to the patient. After enlightenment, listen to the patient. Only you can tell where you are satisfied with something, where you feel uh, better with something. Um, uh, and I'm not talking about like the confirmation bias that also exists if patients wants to please like the uh, psychologist, psychiatrist or the doctor um, uh, with those things. So whenever Pluto crosses Saturn, we're purging karma. When, the, when Pluto and the nodes are involved with Saturn, we are purging the way that we see karma taking place. We are also purging the religions and the, and the uh, belief systems that were orthodox, that believe that, oh, you are having this abusive experience now because of something bad you did in past life. Okay, We are purging that. And it simply is the changing of the times. We have the potential to... Uh, interfere in that point of interference that debrids at least seven generations of well-being into place. And so I want to emphasize and I want to capitalize on that. Um, and I want to uh, be a facilitator agent in your understanding that um, those tortures do not contribute to science, they do not contribute to humanity, and um, they do not, they are not like the heavy price you had to pay for uh, uh, um, progress and enlightenment. They are not. And this is something that if you have this, if you know this, 
then uh, you are beginning already to unlock the keys to the notification um, and the keys to these times where yes a person can make a mistake but it's not going to be that big that is going to affect their children this is the meaning of the, the spirit of the times that you're at and the potential uh, to be and this is why you are having these karmic relations with those people that you have those karma with it's not so that you will be put through suffering on misery um, but so that you will um, tend to these relations at the times of changing karmas whereas in other times those relationships could absolutely yield to kind of like unpleasant experiences or that those experiences like oh you did something in this life now it's happening something in that life um, we now uh, understand that uh, this if you're watching this uh, that this is a time of change in the way karma is delivered um, and so the potential is to create good karma for at least 300 years uh, uh, at least 250 years and um, this is why all of those things are coming into uh, exposure um, and all of the the deep structures are coming into exposure because uh, we the people each and every one of us have has points of interference to just weren't there before even a couple of decades ago so i hope this is useful and study uh, karmic relations um, this will give you a good understanding as to uh, why am i meeting this person why is this thing happening what to do about this what is the point of interference here so happy to help bye, -bye.